You are the fire. Today on Trisha, Rocco, Ryan, and Ian are three men from vastly different backgrounds. A rap artist, a stand-up comic. I work three jobs. But they all have one thing in common. I thought I was the only person on the planet who felt the way that I did. My body was not going to align with what my brain was telling me. I got dealt a bad deck of cards. They were all born female. <laughs> April was married to Tom. They had four children together. But then April became Logan. Men who were born female. She comes to you and she says, I want to be a man. Yes. So the boobs had to go. Please, take them. Thanks for the memories. <laughs> I finally felt like I was in my own skin. You're so hot, you're like Brad Pitt with a vagina. <laughs> the loved ones who support them. He was a pretty lousy lesbian. Uh, <laughs> I'd say that my brother uh, was the most supportive person. These people are just people that want to live their lives and be happy like everybody else, right? Men who were born female. The challenges they face. Puberty was devastating. My family didn't understand it, so I just turned towards body hate and obsession. You know, think I wasn't, you know, scared of taking testosterone and wondering if I was going to grow a second head or something? Men who were born female. Did you know how you felt before you married Tom? Has your sex life improved? Now I'm like the 70s kind of perv with my girlfriend. Kind of like bow chicka bow bow, kind of cheesy, you know? <laughs> Today I'm a man! Men who were born female. Today we're talking to three men who were born female and have transitioned into men. So Rocco, when did you realize as a female that this body wasn't right, something was going wrong. When I was growing up um, as a child, I always felt male. And when puberty hit, uh, I was, came face to face with the reality that my body was not going to adjust itself or align with what my brain was telling me. And when you're a kid, you're not thinking about your gender at all. You just are who you are. And it's yeah. very natural and comfortable. And, and I was raised by parents who let me be who I was and yeah. who let me wear the clothes that I wanted to wear. And I started calling myself by the name George. And they went with it when I was, I think, before I even left preschool. I asserted that I was a boy, and I didn't understand that I wasn't a boy. And puberty, puberty must puberty have been a, was what, a hell of a shock. Yeah, it was devastating. I just In felt what like, way? what is, you know, because everything happened hips, breasts, all of it, I just thought, what is this? This is a nightmare. Did you identify as a lesbian? Did you think maybe yeah. I'm a lesbian? Yeah, because I didn't know that trans men even existed. So sexually, you were with girls then? Always, yeah. Yeah? yeah. And that, so when did you start thinking, well, there's another part to this. I've got to move on, if you like. Well, I met, I met my first trans guy um, when I was 19 years old. And seeing him, I was like, at first I was like, whoa, that's too much. And then within six months, I was just like, okay, yeah. So for me, I look at it as a medical, a medical situation. I don't see yeah. it as anything wrong with my brain or who I am. There's nothing wrong with me. There was, I had medical needs and I took care of them and okay. now I'm fine. So let's talk about the medical needs. You started off, I'm guessing, with you had to have some therapy, hormone therapy. Did you have to go through a psychological assessment as well? Um, no, you know, there is like the Harry Benjamin standards of care for trans people, yeah, yeah. but that's so outdated. It's 1950s. I mean, I, oh. you take a, if you take a look back at all of the pictures in my life, it's very clear. And also, I just think if someone says that they know who they are, there shouldn't have to be a psychological evaluation because no one would go through this unless they really yeah, felt yeah. and knew who they were. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's not, you know... It's not no, it's not like, today I'm a man, you know, like that's not, yeah. You mean, okay, It's so not a fun party trick where you're like, I'm doing this for all of you. I, gotta I hope you like me, you know, if anything, it's quite the opposite. People, you know, you're afraid that you're going to lose your family, your friends, everything that you have in your life. You have to come to the realization that you might have to sacrifice everything in your life to and be did comfortable. And you, did you have to? Did you lose friends? Did you lose family you members? You know, no family. I thank God I have such a great family who's always supported me. And and uh, I feel really grateful for that. But a couple of friends, you know, not close friends. All of my close friends always knew. Yeah. No one had a reaction. Even my mom, when I came out as gay, my mom was like, 
I had this big moment where I was crying and I was like, I have to tell you something. I'm afraid you'll reject me. And yeah. she was like, oh, I've already known for years. <laughs> and similarly, when I came out as trans, they needed the language to understand it because, you know, this is not commonplace yet. Yeah. People don't know about trans identities. People don't know no. how to respect trans people. Um, and I think that once they had the language, my mom just was, her reaction was, yeah. I wish I had known earlier so I could have saved you the pain and the struggle, and you could have had like a teenage boy experience. No, yeah, yeah. And, and, and yeah. your mum is, is in the audience. Are you getting teary? Mm. She's getting, you just like looking better. <laughs> I want to come talk with your mum a, a little bit later, but yeah. you started the hormone treatment. Mm -hmm. How did that change you? What was happening to you and your body and your head and your sex well, drive? It felt like I was going through the final stages of puberty. Um, my voice got deeper. Uh, I started growing facial hair, et cetera. And I was pretty young when I started. I was, uh, in, I was around 2021. 20, right. So all, everything shifted physically. Did you find that society started reacting to you differently oh, as a course. man? Oh, of course. I mean, before I was placed as someone who either was read as male all the time mm -hmm. or was seen as someone who are, are you a woman or a man? Are you gay? What should I do with you? Yeah. And it was sort of like that, like, where should I put you in the restaurant? Where, what bathroom are you going to use? And there was this moment of panic a lot of the time when people would just encounter me. But as a man, it was like, you know, I'm a uh, a man that gets male privilege. So it was like, welcome to the boys club. Now your mum, as I said before, your mum Diana is in the yeah. audience here. Let me come again. <laughs> I think you should stand up. Right, hello. hello. Um, mum to mum, you get a phone call. I believe it was from what, a gas station or something yes. saying what? Hi, I've decided to transition and what name should I use? <laughs> <laughs> but how do you deal with that? Uh, well, it, it just seemed very right because if you look at pictures of Rocco, he had always been, quote unquote, the tomboy. And I think a lot of people sensed it. And to see him in so much pain in high school and just being so angry and unhappy. This was a, a, a new beginning. Even when he was a lesbian, he was a pretty lousy lesbian. Uh, <laughs> Why do you say that? Because I mostly dated straight girls. <laughs> You're a lousy lesbian. <laughs> I mean, the only, the only thing he liked about being a lesbian was the girls. Uh, <laughs> oh, now tell me about the girls. Tell me about Rocco's partners now. What do you, you think of the girls he gets with now? I'm, I'm I, girls, yes? Mm. Girls, yeah. Oh well, yeah, definitely. <laughs> He, until recently, was really bad because he goes after the pretty girls and the pretty girls go after him. But he, he, is, he has grown up a lot and is now looking more for meaningful relationships with okay. really compassionate and wonderful girls. So Thank you. Thank you. She paints it. She paints as, as if I'm like some kind of bad boy that's just dating frivolously. But I was in like a 10 year relationship with a woman when I started my transition. Yeah. yeah. And it was like a, with a real person who was like a kind and decent person. But, you know, so I'm not like frivolously so like you, you just going and looking for the crazy pretty girl. But, <laughs> but that's but nice. But if too. a crazy pretty girl. <laughs> yeah, okay. So, Rocco, now you're a rapper. You've just yeah. released your latest album, Second Hand Emotion. Rapping seems a very male macho thing was that a, on, on purpose how did you get into rapping i mean it just was i was a poet first so and i always made music so it just seemed like the perfect blend of both when you know you went through puberty so the boobs had to go please take them thanks for the memories <laughs> <laughs> did you have any operations down below i always say about in terms of what's in my pants like I don't like answering that question because I'm not sitting here wondering what's in your pants. No offense to anybody, but um, <laughs> but I say, yeah. my, you know, like I just think a lot of the time, I, my rule of thumb is it's no one's business unless we're getting busy, and that's how it should be for everyone. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. And uh, we will be back right after this. One day you could wear my ring The next day I might sing about broken hearts Unspoken dark nights never started out right Deer in headlights, daybreak lights the way I'd invite you to stay, but other than...
Up next, from the age of two, she wanted to be a he. I had a little Superman outfit and there's a little dress and I took the dress part off because I was not super yeah. girl or Superman. From intolerance and self-abuse, my family didn't understand it, so I just turned towards body hate and obsession. To finding his true identity. I finally felt like I was in my own skin. Ryan's story is next. Men who were born female. Today on Trisha. All right. Um, I want to move on to Ryan, who's sitting in the middle. Um, Ryan, uh, in your memoir, you've got a memoir out, Second Son. Now you talk about the emotional ups and downs of ending up as as Ryan. How difficult was it for you? Did you did you go through? feeling first as Rocco did that you were a lesbian and then moving on from there? No, uh, you know, trans people, we have different stories. Yeah. And for me, it was difficult because I was born in Nebraska. And I still live in Nebraska, actually, which is still difficult. Uh, and I had no idea what anything was, be it gay, lesbian, transgender. I had a sense of my identity being different, or my gender being different around age two and a half. Really? Yeah, they say you have a sense of your gender identity, which is uh, what's between your ears, your brain. Your yeah, psychological yeah, sense yeah. of being man or woman. Uh, around 18 months, as early as 18 months. And then you start verbalizing it around age three or four. And how did you verbalize that? Uh, well, I didn't verbalize it that time. What I did was we lived in the country and we had a pool in our backyard. And I saw my family with swimming trunks and I saw my family in a one-piece bathing suit and I had on a little two-piece. And with my little pudgy stomach, I looked down, I was like, meh. So I took the top off to be like swimming trunks. Yeah. Uh, and then I had a little Superman outfit and there's a little dress and I took the dress part off because I was not super yeah. girl, I was Superman. So it was little behaviors like that that I started with. And so I was very frustrated with that. Yeah. I remember staying in the bathroom around age seven and just sitting there and thinking, I got dealt a bad deck of cards yeah. and I have to live with this the rest of my life and this really sucks. And puberty must have been hell. Well, I don't think puberty is fun for anybody, but <laughs> <laughs> it's, yeah, it's but pretty horrific. Before people would look at me and they'd always confuse me for a little boy, which a part of me really liked, but a part of me still felt frustrated by that because yeah. You know, I knew I was a girl. You yeah. Know, I didn't want to yeah, be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but then with puberty, you start seeing breast development, hip development, the menstrual cycle. All these things are just horrific. How, uh, did, how did you deal with that? Did well, when I was little, I had this awareness of wanting to be a boy. And I'd go out in the stars and wish to become one. Oh. Um, and then when puberty hit, yeah. I knew that wasn't possible. I had to let go of that. So I just turned towards body hate and obsession. And I saw some female bodybuilders on TV and I was super impressed that they really didn't have any breasts because their pectoral muscles were so ah. big. They didn't really have any body fat and they were just, you know, really beefy. So did you diet? I was doing, yeah, lots of different behaviors and exercise, weightlifting, uh, anything that I could do. That's <laughs> weightlifting, yeah. So, and uh, did you, you developed an eating disorder? I did. When I was in college, I became severely ill with anorexia and I almost died from it. And this was what, about keeping your body, trying to keep your body androgynous, having some control over the uncontrollable? Well, I didn't know. I didn't know what it was about. I just knew I felt very awkward. Yeah. And when I was in college, it, it became even more awkward. And I was like, I need to change my body so that I fit in this society and that people will love me and accept me and find me attractive. And I thought I need to be skinny. And that's mm -hmm. where the behaviors then took on. I didn't understand what was gender. I didn't understand until four years into therapy uh, when I started looking at sexuality. And that's, that's when it hit home. What about your family, friends and family? How did they deal with this? You, you mentioned being in Nebraska, I'm guessing right. very conservative area yeah. where you said before, never mind transgender, gay or anything right. else was an issue. What, how did everyone around you react? Well, I don't think my parents would be like, oh, okay, I already knew, or that's good because you were a lousy lesbian, unfortunately. <laughs> I wish I had that. You, uh, yeah. My family didn't understand it. It was not a topic that they had ever <coughs> seen or heard before. I'd say that my brother uh, was the most supportive person then. Here. Yeah. Yeah. So, I always say if it wasn't for him, I don't know if I'd be here. Now, did you have surgery? I did. Uh, I did. Top, bottom? Uh, for me, I completed what some people say all the steps. However, I always say it's really up to the individual. Mm. Not everybody wants surgery, nor do they think they need it. But for me, I knew I needed it. And yeah. how, how much are we talking about? Uh, over the past seven years, I've spent 40000 out of pocket. Yeah. yeah. How'd you pay for that? Uh, I worked three jobs. And I have really good credit, so I had really great credit lines. <laughs> yeah, the banking, yeah. 
So you go through all of this. How did people change in their attitude towards you when you were the, the female to, to becoming a male? How did people change? I don't think people really changed. I think I changed. After I transitioned, I finally felt like I was in my own skin. I felt like I wanted people to see me. And that's ah. why I've become a national speaker and share my story with the universities and other agencies across the nation is because I want people to be able to see uh, an identity in a person instead of a label. back we're going to meet Ryan's brother Greg who's with us in the audience we're going to chat with him and we're going to meet stand-up comic Ian <laughs> up next men who were born female I am not the only person on the planet that feels awkward about their body and their gender and the family supporting them these people are just people that want to live their lives and be happy like everybody else, right? And later. Has your sex life improved? Transgender stand-up comic Ian is on the hot seat. Men who were born female. Today on Trisha. Okay, we've been talking to Ryan, Rocco, and Ian, three men who were born female, who say they are now living the lives they were meant to lead. So, Ryan, uh, you mentioned your, your brother, mm -hmm. Greg, who's in the audience. We want to come down here and hear from his side because there are always family members involved. So, Greg, one of the things Ryan was talking about was that, that time in his life when he went through, I call it eating distress, mm -hmm. also known as anorexia in, in your case. Yeah. Did you know what that was about? I didn't know why he was doing it. I mean, I was really concerned. I mean, he would come into the office. I'm, I'm a chiropractor, yeah, you know, yeah. and he'd come in and I'd work on him. And I could put my hands around his waist like this. It was just like a skeleton. When he smiled, he didn't have cheek fat anymore, There's a, he just had this oval and it's, he looked like a skeleton, it was terrible. And you were scared you were going to Yeah, him. yeah, I, I, ta I called my dad at the time, I was like, if you don't do something, I'm going to go to the courts and I'm going to do something. Right. You know, because he needs to be hospitalized. <laughs> yeah. so, but that transition, was, was, was that a shock to you? It was probably like a deer caught in the headlights, you know? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. What the hell? And then I got my card. <laughs> I drove home and I just started freaking bawling. Just it was because yeah. you know it's like, what the hell's going on here? You know, this is my sister. Are you proud of your brother? Oh God, yeah. He does so much for you know in educating the community and businesses and schools, and that's so important because I see all this this mindless hate and bigotry and just it's ignorance. These people are just people that want to live their lives and be happy like everybody else, right? So, yeah. Ian, let me just tell our, our audience, you took a really sensitive subject and you turned it into a career that makes people laugh. You're a stand-up comedian. Why would you do that? I just felt like uh, I really wanted to share my story in a way that was funny, that people could wrap their heads around. I thought there's no, probably no better way to have an intimate sharing experience but to laugh together. Yeah. And when I first came out, um, I thought I was the only person on the planet who felt the way that I did. And then immediately after that, I started having these thoughts of like, you know what, I am not the only person on the planet that feels awkward about their body and yeah. their gender. And I started talking to audience members and I was like, oh my God, these people are relating to me. They're not laughing at me, they're relating to me. And that everybody in the world has something about their bodies that they feel awkward about. And it oftentimes has to do with their masculinity or their yeah, femininity. Yeah. Like there are women getting breast augmentation.
operations every day. It's and you, like what, the you had yours taken off. I did. And I thought, you know, what's the difference if someone wants to add something to their body to feel more feminine or to take something away like I did to feel more masculine? It's the same mm -hmm. thing. We just call it something different. So I just, I just And you get charged twice as much for one operation. <laughs> right, right, <Yeah>. right. Right. <laughs> So, <laughs> no, I was so, going to say, but let, let, uh, let me, let's, let's, get, let's go way back sure, and then work up sure. to the present. When did you realize that how you looked in the mirror wasn't how you felt inside? Um, I, very much like these guys. Um, I, from a very early age, and I am actually appreciative of my female history and having grown up as a girl because I learned a lot of stuff that I wouldn't have learned if I was a boy. You put the toilet seat down. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> Okay. It just stays down. But anyway, um, <laughs> it, is, it, does not, it does not. So, hang on. But, hang on. No, if, but, if, if, if the toilet seat, I don't want to stick with the toilet stuff, but if the toilet seat stays down, does that mean you, you haven't had the operation down Correct, below? I have not. I have yeah, not. What, was that a conscious decision? Uh, I'm 44 years old. I've lived uh, this length of my life, this time of my life, with the parts that I have. Like, how it would be a lot to, like, switch and learn how to use that stuff. You know, I'm kind of lazy. <laughs> I don't know. I don't, I don't know, like, I just, I know how my stuff works, I know how it works, and You're I'm good with that, with you know, like, I'm just like, you know, I don't want to have to go mix and then relearn, it's like, I don't want to, you know, learn a new language. But, but you, so. you, you know, and something else I asked the other guys, that moment, now, being serious, uh, again, of, I, there are different ways to deal or to try to deal with the changes that are happening mentally and physically, um, I think, you, did you, you got into smoking wacky backy, to smoking weed? Uh, you know, I did, I was uh, into drugs before I transitioned. And right. once I transitioned, I started valuing my life in a different way and realized that I could be happy and comfortable, and I stopped using it. So you everything. didn't need it anymore. Yeah. And, and Ryan, with you, Ryan, with you, I, I get part of that confusion came out in, in, in you know, eating dis distress. Mm -hmm. With you, what, what? Oh, yeah. What I started drinking at a really, really early age. Like, trying to, how old? Of, uh, t uh, I, my, probably my first drink and drunk was probably around nine years old. Um, and what it did for me was it kept me a member of that club until I hit puberty. But did it give and, you a drinking problem? Oh, absolutely. By the time I was 21, I was exhausted um, from my own drinking. And I knew I couldn't figure out why I was drinking until I stopped drinking. And uh, I got sober... Um, when I was about five months past my 21st birthday. And uh, this November, I'll be sober 20 years. Yeah. Right. Now, now Ian, Ian, you actually bought us a series of, of photographs. Um, sure. And this is amazing to have a look. We actually put together a progression of your transition. So let's have a look at that. <laughs> I like that weird mustache. Yeah, the way you got that. You Once I got out, facial right? hair, I wanted to do all kinds of weird stuff with it. So I did that weird mustache for a while. Had that like little curl to it. All right, later in the show, Ian has agreed to do a no holds barred Q&A with our audience here. So you do not want to miss this. Coming up, April was married to Tom. They had four children together. She comes to you and she says, I want to be a man. Yes. But then April became Logan. Did you know how you felt before you married Tom? And later. Has your sex life improved? You are the fire. You're my soul. Men who were born female. Today on Trisha. Okay, here are some pictures of my next guest, April. 
Now, when these pictures were taken, April was about to marry a loving man named Tom and to have four beautiful children with him. But as much as April loved her family, she knew deep down inside that she was living a lie. So, April decided to reveal the truth to her family and to change her life forever. So please welcome April. Uh, hi. So, April, you don't like being called April mm -hmm. anymore. Your name is now? Logan. Logan. Yes, ma'am. So you have, you gave birth to four children. I did. Um, you're married to Tom. Yes. So did you know how you felt before you married Tom? I did. So when did you decide, was there that defining moment of, this isn't how I want to live my life? It was, for sure, after our fourth child. How does he deal with that? This is his wife and the mother of his children. Right. And then he's got this guy in bed with him? Yeah, yeah. I, I think it was really awkward for him uh, because it's still, even, even now, it's something that he's, I don't think he's really sure 100%, you know, how to deal with it because he's not, he's, he's a straight guy. And, you know, if I want to kiss him or something, the beard is an issue. Wow, and you're still married? Yeah, I, I love 11 years. Uh, do you ever talk about, you know, having other partners? Um, we have discussed, have, you know, uh, we discussed having an open relationship. And right now that's, that's where it's at, you know, because I want him to be happy. And if he found um, a girl that was to, he wanted to date, sure. Well, believe it or not, as you heard, Logan and Tom, they're still together. Uh, Tom considers himself a straight man, as you said before. Well, last night, these two sat down with our producers to tell their story. I met Tom. He was my interviewing manager at a restaurant that I applied to. We would go out and whatnot, eventually in November of 2001, we got married. We wound up having four children together, all for me, and it was awesome. That's the one thing about being female-bodied that I enjoy. Logan is, is a great parent. It's the, probably the biggest reason that I'm still in a relationship with him because we have the, an intimacy that not, not necessarily sexual but a very serious intimacy to us that you just can't find anywhere. A lot of people when you when you first transition you know one of the things that you hear is oh you're selfish. If you don't become who you really need to be, you're meant to be, you're gonna be miserable and that would have been me. He walks into my room and says can, can I talk to you a moment? I'm like Sure. Then he says, I want to be a man. And my response to that was, okay. I just shrugged my shoulders and said, okay. And that was the entire conversation. Literally two months later, he's taken testosterone treatment. He's my best friend. That's never going to change. If I get married again, he'll be the best man at my wedding. If he gets married again, I'm the best man at his wedding. Honestly, if people don't like it, I don't really know what to tell them. But. If you divorce, that doesn't mean you have to be horrible, evil enemies. No, it can work out. Um, so, I, I'm still getting over this, and I will ask Tom about that. That that's oh, okay. That whole thing, I, I that's that's really difficult to wrap my head around. But puberty for you, was that difficult, the whole transition? I didn't hit puberty until I was 19. Right. Yeah, so, and everything happened overnight. I woke up the next morning and I had a chest and other things. And it was, uh, I cried, I cried all day long. So have you had any surgery since? No, no. not at all, no. So will you what, bind yourself? I do. I do. I, I actually bind with two different binders. And when you see your body, when you go to take a shower or something like that, how, how is that for you? I don't look at myself. 
so the big question is how does a man stay with his wife after she transitions into a man? Well, stay with us and you will find out when we meet Tom when we come back. Coming up, Ian's on the hot seat for a no-holds-barred audience Q&A. Has your sex life improved? But first, do you think that Logan is selfish? Honestly? Um. Men who were born female. Today on Trisha. Welcome back, welcome back. We've been talking to Logan, who after marrying a man named Tom and having four children, transitioned into a man. Well, let's meet Logan's husband, Tom. Come on out, Tom. <laughs> Hi, how you doing? So, Tom, she comes to you and she says, I want to be a man. Yes. And you really went, oh, yes, fine. You know, like, what colour should we paint the room? Pink? Pretty blue, much. Or green? It was the, my response was, I was actually playing a game. So I'm like, okay. You didn't feel okay inside, surely. I felt more apathetic than anything um, because our relationship has been a little bit rocky and this explained a lot of the problems we were having in a relationship and if he was uncomfortable with himself at the time you got to be who you are in order to be with anybody you're with but this is the yeah 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 okay but this is the mother of your children so it may be okay for you but in the back of your your mind you're thinking the four kids am i going to tell them one was very young he was six split. months old. Six months old? Approximately, yes. Do you think that uh, Logan is selfish? Honestly? Um, it, the choice isn't selfish because the choice, there is no choice. He is what he is. Yeah. But the decision to get married and have four kids and bring me into a relationship and then change, that was definitely selfish. Yeah. Is, is that an issue for you? If you knew back then when you met that this was going to happen, would you still... Not a chance. You wouldn't? Not a chance. You wouldn't I have would, got married? No, never. If I met him right now, I wouldn't give him a second look. But if you met, if you knew the young woman that you met back then was going to... If he told to, me yeah. that we're going to have a family and then I'm going to become a man, no. Kissing a guy? I mean, you, you, are you gay or straight? No, we don't kiss just doesn't really happen. So, who wears the pants in your relationship? That depends upon which, what, what aspect of it. Yeah. If it's anything where it's a decision making, usually me, if it, especially if it involves money, but uh, well, I'm here, and I didn't actually really, I don't I like the pants being on TV. Yeah. Logan, you told him be here? No, he said, no, I, I, he it, asked me if I would do it for him, yeah. and I said yes. Okay. I mean, I can't be forced into anything. Yeah. <laughs> You are a man and a half. You really are. He, he's, he's a saint. He really is. He's a really good guy. Ten years from now when the kids, or maybe 15 years when the kids have all left home, do you think you'll still be together? Oh, heavens, I hope not. That's not that bad. Okay. okay. No, it, you know, if anything, we're always going to be friends. I, like, we get along great. Yeah. The whole reason we got, we got together in the first place is we, we shared so many interests. You know, we were good friends then, and then we just moved into a relationship, and I hope yeah. even after the relationship part ends, yeah. we'll still be friends and we'll still get along great because the kids are involved as well. I think it's important that the, both parents be in their lives mm -hmm. because that's what children need. Absolutely. So, Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you. All right. 
thank you to both of you. Now, I know a lot of people in the audience have questions. Uh, so Ian, who we met before, Ian's agreed to uh, sit in the Trisha hot seat and answer them all when we come back. Up next, transgender stand-up. You know, think I wasn't scared of taking testosterone and wondering if I was going to grow a second head or something? Ian is on the hot seat and will answer any and all audience questions. Has your sex life improved? You are the guy. Get off my stage. Men who were born female. Today on Trisha. Hi, we've been talking to men who were born female and have now transitioned to men. Now, we know our audience has a lot of questions, and uh, so Ian has gracefully agreed to sit in the Trisha hot seat and answer any question an audience member has. And even if you have questions for any of our other guests, just pipe up and say, but okay, let's come, I'm gonna come to this gentleman right here, get you to stand up. How do you best recommend non-trans people uh, defend trans people from transphobic remarks? I think it's one of those things that I just have compassion and usually I try to, you know, bring a joke about it. So, you. Um, and, you know, and try to also, you know what, to try to align myself with them. Like, you know what, I was scared too, man. You think, you think I wasn't, you know, scared of taking testosterone and wondering if I was going to grow a second head or something, you know, like, <laughs> I didn't know what was exactly going to happen to me either. Because I, I actually had a question here. Do you, you talk about people questioning their own sexuality. It must make some women think, oh, well, if he was a she, then I've got to be really feminine today. Or if he was, a, if he's now a he, I'm a real he. I'm going to be even more he today. You know, I think once guys in particular, not girls, but guys in particular, once they learn that I'm trans, they definitely get all beefy on me and all like, <laughs> like, what's up? Like, yeah. And then... It, there is a definitely, a, they try to make sure that they really contrast themselves to me. Yeah, there's yeah, a difference. I can a do difference. more push-ups than you Yeah, do. yeah. Okay. I think you're adorable, and I was wondering how women, uh, how you deal with the women that come well, on to was you. Was that a personal question? No. <laughs> <laughs> Once they hear me talk about my girlfriend, girls come up to me after shows. This girl came up to me after a show one time, and she said, oh my God, you're so hot. You're like Brad Pitt with a vagina. <laughs> I was like, oh my oh, God, like I'm the real Brangelina. That's awesome. <laughs> well, I wish you a lot of luck. Yeah? Hi, and you are? I'm Brittany Velada, and I would like to know, has your sex life improved since your surgery with your girlfriend? Now I'm like the 70s kind of perv with my girlfriend that <laughs> I never used to be. I what, what, say what's, things what's to my... What's the 70s perv? You know, kind of like bow, chicka, bow, bow, kind of cheesy, you know, like... <laughs> I say things to her that I never used to say. Like, we had dinner the other night, and I said, you enjoy dinner? And uh, she said, yeah, it really hit the spot. I go, I'm going to hit the spot later. <laughs> Who says that? It's gross. Now, would you have known Ian or Rocco or Ryan or any of our guests? Would you have ever had any thought that they had been born female? Absolutely not. I think you guys are all fabulous, and you're doing what you need to do and getting the word out there. Thank so, you. props to you. And just finally, Ian, because nobody here has said it, but I know a lot of people at home are, are, are thinking it. What about all the people who say, uh, this is wrong, this isn't what was meant to be. If you're a woman, you should stay a woman. If you're a man, you should stay a man. So what's your final message to those, those people who uh, feel somehow they have a right to dictate to others how their lives should be? I would say um, one of the best things that was ever said to me when I transitioned was from this straight guy friend of mine. He said, dude, he said, whatever you want for yourself is what I want for you. And if that changes, then that's what I want for you. And if that changes again, then that's what I want for you. And I think that you don't have to understand it to accept it. And people think that those two things belong together, and they don't. You can love somebody and accept someone without understanding something. And uh, I, I would just say, you know, acceptance and love, it's not hard to love somebody. It's just not. It's very, very easy to love somebody. So that's what I would say. Thank you. And uh, we will be back right after this.
men who were born female. Today on Trisha. Thank you. I'd like to thank all of my wonderful guests for coming today and sharing their amazing stories with us. And I thank you for watching. Bye-bye.